few years ago, I had a client that came to me and they were really kind of at their wits end. They had gone from lender to lender and they kept getting told no. This borrower seemed like they would be every lender's dream. They had a large down payment. They could definitely afford the payment, but there wasn't a loan program that seemed to fit them. And so lenders would say, well, you had this credit issue in the back. You had a, I think it was a bankruptcy uh, a few years ago. And sorry, we just can't make it happen for you. Fortunately, I was able to help them close on their home, fit within their plans. They were able to put the down payment that they wanted and get the home that they wanted. Surprisingly, the loan type that we used was FHA. A lot of times they will write it off because they think maybe it's just for first-time home buyers or perhaps the property might not fit for FHA. There are a lot of myths that are out there. And the concern that I have is that Either if somebody who would be a perfect fit for FHA is steered away from FHA, winds up paying more for their mortgage, more for their home than they should, or it might prevent them from being a homeowner altogether. Welcome back to my channel. I'm so glad you're here. I'm Rebecca Richardson, the Mortgage Mentor. And this week we are talking about FHA loans. FHA can be the right choice for a buyer if they want a lower interest rate, if they want a lower down payment because they are purchasing multifamily, because perhaps, yes, they have had a credit issue in the past or for a variety of other reasons. Let's get into some of the FHA myths, and then I'll take you through the basics so you can know if FHA is the right option for you. The first one is that FHA loans are only for first-time home buyers. And the fact is you don't have to be a first-time home buyer in order to qualify for FHA. FHA tends to be a good option for really anybody who is purchasing a primary home under a 700 score. They should look at FHA. So you could conceivably sell your home that maybe has an FHA loan on it and purchase another one. Or you could do what some people are doing, a popular house hacking option. And that's where you purchase maybe a multifamily home, a two to four unit property, live in one of the units, and then rent out the others for additional rental income. And then after you've occupied it for at least a year, you could choose to rent out that other unit or the whole house if it's a single family home and purchase another one. So it is a great opportunity for you to not only get a primary home, but to start to build up a real estate portfolio if that's what you're looking to do. Another myth that people have about FHA loans are that the property has to be in perfect condition and it just doesn't. So there are minimum property standards that a home has to have. Most of those minimum property standards are concerned with things that you're probably going to be concerned with anyway. They're typically around health or safety. Some of the common examples are going to be signs of water damage or perhaps mold. Healing paint is a big one, and it may seem like a hassle, but it's there for a reason. Because if it's a home built prior to 1978, there could be lead. Other things that could come into play would be things like broken windows or missing handrails. Most of the time, again, it's going to be something that you as a buyer probably want addressed before the home becomes yours. However, the home does not need to be in perfect condition. And too often I hear realtors or sometimes even buyers saying, I'm not even gonna look at that home because it's never gonna go FHA. Here's the thing, as a lender, it is my job to be an expert in what can go FHA. So if you have a question about if a property would pass, let me know, ask me, because I don't want you to miss out on a great opportunity just because of some misconceptions or misunderstanding of what the situation has to be. And if the home is in rough shape, let's say that some of these things are there and they need to be fixed or you want them fixed. FHA has one of the best renovation programs. It's called a two or three K and there are two paths that you can take. One is for more minor jobs, meaning nothing structural. And then the other path is something that's more significant or more significant work. Either way, an FHA 203K is a great way to take a ugly house and turn it into a beautiful swan. Now let's get into the FHA basics. The minimum down payment that you need for an FHA loan is 3.5% of the sales price. Keep in mind that yes, that can come from your own funds like checking, savings, even a 401k loan, but you could also get a gift from family. So perhaps if it's a sibling or a parent, maybe they want to help you with your new home, they could help you with a down payment. There are two main components of mortgage insurance when it comes to FHA loans. Most of the time, when people think about mortgage insurance, first of all, they think it's a four-letter word, that it's a bad thing. And I want to challenge you to think about that it's really something more along the lines of leverage, meaning without it, perhaps you wouldn't get the home, you wouldn't be able to get approved for a loan, or you wouldn't be able to buy because you don't have 20% down. So for maybe a hundred or a couple hundred dollars a month, it allows you to put a lower down payment and still be able to purchase a home, stabilize your housing payment and grow equity as the home appreciates in value. With mortgage insurance, there are those two components. There's the monthly version, and then there is what is called an upfront mortgage insurance premium. 
And all that means is that it is a percentage of your loan amount that is financed back into the loan amount. So you don't pay it out of pocket, but it is added to your loan balance. Minimum scores are a common question around FHA. And you can still put as little as 3.5% down as long as your credit score is 580 or better. And if your credit score is between 500 and 575, you can still get approved for an FHA loan by putting only 10% down. One of my favorite things about FHA loans is that the down payment is still 3.5%, regardless if you are purchasing a single unit home all the way up to four units. That has very significant savings on the required down payment and the amount needed in order to start building a real estate portfolio. FHA is also more forgiving for past credit events. So if you have had a bankruptcy, if you have had a chapter seven, you can purchase as recent as two years after the date of discharge. And with a chapter 13, you can purchase a home after only one year into your payout period. And as long as you have the trustee's permission. FHA also allows for you to purchase a home as little as three years after foreclosure. So it is meant to be a bridge into home ownership, whether it's a bridge back into home ownership or it's for the first time. FHA loans do not have minimum income caps. That's important to remember because for other low down payment options like USDA, there are income limits. There are, however, loan limits, meaning that the maximum loan amount for many areas in the U.S. is going to be just over $470,000. That is for a single family unit. But if you go up to four units, then that loan amount does increase. So whether you're looking to purchase your first home or maybe re-enter home ownership or even purchase your first property and start building up a real estate portfolio, take a second look at FHA. FHA is a great fit and not a second best option for a lot of home buyers. Don't let myths and misconceptions get in the way of you becoming a homeowner. And please reach out with any questions. Thanks for being here.